Jerry Ward passed away in the summer of 2022, tragically and abruptly. And it wasn't known exactly why. The hypothesis was that he may have had a heart attack or he might have had a pulmonary embolism, maybe aortic dissection, something. And it wasn't until recently that his wife came public and stated the results of the postmortem from the autopsy that indeed her husband, Jerry, died from a pulmonary embolism. And he's a young man. This is something that I want to explain to you today as an intro medicine doctor. I was trained back in the day in hospitals to deal with pulmonary embolisms on an acute side of things from a medical standpoint, not to mention DVTs and the whole process of how this can happen. So I want to utilize this example and I never want to be disrespectful to Jerry's family's loved ones and friends. But as his wife said, Jerry was a very in your face guy, very open guy, and he wants the truth to be known. So Jerry, God bless you, brother, and rest in peace. But this is exactly what could have happened on that night and what we could understand on how you, brothers of iron that are on androgens, can prevent this. It's a very complicated process. Here we go. So venous thromboembolism, deep venous thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, this is the top. This is the category. This is the hypercoagulable state, and the end is a pulmonary embolism. There's a clotting process. It's very complicated. We're going to go into this today. And you balance, you're balanced. People live balanced between clotting and bleeding. This is so unbelievably prehistoric for mammals. So when it gets out of balance and you have a clotting disorder and you have a hypercoagulable state, you can end up having a blood clot in the lower legs, not to mention it could be in the upper extremities as well. More commonly, lower limbs. And then it fosters, it builds, and it goes up back in the venous circulatory system, not the arterial system. This is the heart attacks and the strokes from that perspective. That's not today. This is the venous system, deep venous thrombosis. So you have to understand the pulmonary embolism. It goes up and it could lodge in the pulmonary arteries. It's a saddle emboli. It's a massive one that obviously hit this man and it hit him hard and that was it. Sometimes people survive. Most people can actually, they get short of breath, they have symptoms and they survive it. Now, Let's talk about Jerry's symptoms. He, he was supposedly having chest pain, and it wasn't a usual kind of chest pain. It's called pleuritic. It's called pleuritic chest pain, and he doesn't know this. And he got a massage because it was just probably irritating that he breathed in and it was painful. It wasn't like cardiac angina pain, okay? But it, you have to understand there's a differential diagnosis for all this. As an expert physician in the ER, and if he just got to the goddamn ER, it could have been a better outcome for him. But we can't look at that from that perspective. He had pleuritic chest pain. The differential diagnosis of that is pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, and aortic dissection. Now, you guys certainly know these issues from the bodybuilders that can die, and these things are all blood clotted related and acute potential for death. But let's go into this mechanism, the venous thromboembolism, which is just a general term for the pathophysiology and the DVT in the pulmonary embolism. There's something that is old and classic for how this happens. And I want to explain it to you so you can really see what your risks are. These are the risks. Virchow's triad. This is old as the hills when you're training as an internist and medical student. This is, there are three things. It's a triad, stasis, hypercoagulable state, endothelial damage. Let's go. 
So, and let's try to think about Jerry's scenario, e-mobility, so it's classic. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you're concerned for your testosterone levels. In addition to testosterone, you want to check sexual binding globulin, estradiol, free androgen index, and potentially cortisol. That's what I want to talk about today's sponsor. Let's get checked. They're a worldwide leader in at-home test kits, so you can get a comprehensive look at your testosterone levels and other labs without even leaving your home. You can order a test kit that will be delivered to you in discrete packaging. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five business days. These results are reviewed by a clinician and a member of the Let's Get Checked nursing team may call you to review your results. Let's Get Checked laboratories are CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are the highest ranking levels of accreditation for labs. So if you want to test your hormone levels without having to leave your home, visit trylgc.com. E-mobility, so it's classic, a long flight, but he wasn't flying. Driving, he drove. He drove maybe a long distance. So being immobile, just sitting, not really at a desk, that's, but it can happen sitting in a desk. It depends on who you are. So the classic e-mobility, maybe you're booted because you have an, a, you have an injury to your leg and you, you have a surgery or something. So that, that's the post-op, you see that? And then having the post-op is also a trauma, which is down here. We'll get to that in a minute. So these, the moons line up. You see the moons lined up for this, this poor man. And the immobility is something. So keep moving. You're on a plane, you're driving, hydrate yourself, keep moving. Keep your legs moving. If you've got a swollen leg ever, you got to go to the ER. Plitoric chest pain, obviously, go to the ER. Next, hypercoagulable state. The classic ones, this is genetic stuff. This is really initially genetic. Factor V Leiden, prothrombin gene expression G20210A protein CNS. Those are, again, these are the most common. This is actually not very esoteric. Any good doctor knows this. We don't know if Jerry had it. Obviously, he didn't have it because his wife would have said something. Family history. Family history. So if you, a lot of men have this. Now, hypercoagulable state, if you go on TRT or you use steroids, this is a big thing. Not going into Jerry's steroid use. We're staying away from that, guys. It's, it's possible, it's probable that Jerry's living on TRT, like a lot of us. TRT is definitely a risk for hypercoagulable states, DVTs and pulmonary embolisms, guaranteed to be a risk. We just don't understand how the risks are for every person. Let me talk about that further. Androgen-induced erythrocytosis that can lead to polycythemia. That's the red blood cells, the interplay. That's why... You have to understand this and get on the app and look at your labs and work with this stuff with me and your, your caregivers. That's the polycythemia. That's the red blood cell stuff. You have to look at the CBC interplay with the iron studies. You have to do this yourself. Now, next, for, for bodybuilders and for men like us that may be using or have a history of using the PEDs, you're on androgens with, with steroids, maybe together, it potentially sets up a hypercoagulable state. So selective estrogen receptor modulators. Again, this is for you guys. I really thought about this. Tamoxifen, raloxifene, not the AIs. I don't think those are hypercoagulably related. I think it's, it's more the, 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 the ones that we use for gyno, it is tamoxifen for breast cancer, raloxifene. It's, these are both selective estrogen receptor modulators, and I prescribe these. Even Clomid for fertility and for, for hypogonadism and clomiphene. So you, th this is incredible. These drugs, was he on these? I don't know. Was he, did he have a little flare of gyno? Was he running some raloxifene or tamoxifen on top of TRT, on top of the e-mobility? You see moons lining up. You guys have to think of this for yourself. You have to be your own, your own healthcare provider now with help of me and your doctors with the app, anabolicdocapp.com. 
chemotherapy. Guy wasn't on chemo, but chemo can do it. And then you have antidepressants. I think that's rare, but if you, I really did the research and you, you'll see that maybe it's true that you could research antidepressants on top of testosterone. Maybe you're using some of these things for gyno. Whoa, are you going to get it? What is your genes? Do you have factor five? Or one of these other uh, pro-mutation uh, genetics, the, the gene interplay. Again, the, and then drugs, other drugs. The guy wasn't, Jerry wasn't a drug user, but it's, it's interesting that people that do chronic coke and cocaine, again, people do these things. I, it wasn't Jerry. They do these, and then it, there's an interplay. So we know that from people that, especially cocaine, it's a, it sets up a hypercoagulable state. Very complicated. Last piece with this triad, endothelial damage. That's where you really hit your leg hard or you have a trauma in the upper limb. So we're trying to get veins in the upper limb, get a catheter or a pick line in. People get uh, in the upper limb, they can get the clots and DVTs upper limb all the time in the hospital because we're monkeying with it. It's, that, that's, that's part of the triad where you're, where you're getting endothelial damage because you're damaging it. Now, Jerry banged his leg or he, had, he was lugging up his suitcases and he thought he hurt his back or his rib. So I thought maybe, did he bang his leg really hard? Did he, did he have some trauma? Again, on top of all these things, it's possible this is when the stuff all lines up. So it, it, the endothelial damage is when it, you, you damage the endothelium. Again, it's, there's arterial and there's, there's endothelial. There's on the venous side, the inner wrapping. It's more, this endothelial stuff is really more complicated and specific for the arterial side. But for, for in, in this way, it, you damage the vein, you get exposed collagen, and then a clotting cascade ensues, you see? And depending on these other issues, it's going to go. So that, that's, that's the triad. Now, who knows in the end of the day what, how much pieces, how much it was this and that and the TRT maybe he was on, maybe he banged his leg and he, was, he drove. Who knows? In the end of the day, what can you do? Here's what I want you, you guys to do. Obviously, testosterone itself can cause it, not to mention su sundry steroids, other, you know, Tastin, Dacon, Anova, all these drugs that we've used, all these drugs that, that people would love to use and try to keep the doses down. You, you really should get a good history, history, history. And you can do that and see, do you have factor five in the family? Just checking the stuff randomly, it, not really guaranteed, you know, there's a lot of fluctuations, there, there's a lot of, when you look at the 23andMe and these things, you're going to get a lot of information that may be scary and not relevant. So I kind of hold back on just jumping onto the gene stuff. But you may want to look into it with, with a very good expert that's going to give you specific details and actionable uh, uh, findings, an actionable, true, true management plan for you guys. So the management plan is look at your CBC, look at the polycythemia, look at your iron levels, really try to keep, so if you're immobile and you have like, I've seen so many patients with knee injuries and they're put in a boot after the orthopedic and of course they're on TRT because they're my patients. And then, or an Achilles rupture and they put them in a boot or they have just something, a sprained ankle and then boom, they have a DVT. The, if their leg is swollen, and it's a no-brainer. You got to get a Doppler ultrasound. You got to get that investigated. This is interesting that Jerry didn't have any of this supposedly. So it, it was just silent, or he's a tough guy and he just had swelling or something, and the clots and and the clot itself moved up quick. That happens, and but he had that then he had that left side pleuritic chest pain. So he had clots sitting up in his lungs. They were sitting there from probably down in his legs, lower limbs. And they were just building up and building up. And then that, that fateful night, it, it just, it overwhelmed him and then he collapsed. So again, you, you want to look at these, these issues that you could take charge in is the history of your family history. Be careful with the serums, not to mention all the drugs and the steroids. And then if you have any trauma to your legs or if you're driving or you're, or a classic, a long trip, move, man, hydrate and move. And if you have any swelling of a unilateral leg, certainly like one leg and it's kind of painful behind the, the calf, you're moving, it's painful. Don't blow that off, guys. Get right into a hospital and get a Doppler ultrasound. And they would have 
oh, they, they would have checked uh, not his legs. They would have done a, they would have done a CT angiogram and they would have seen that the PE. It's almost it's almost close to 100% uh, detectable that at that point with a nice clot in there, not to mention some symptoms, um, that they would have seen it and they would have started him on anticoagulation medications then and there. And look, there's no reason to go back, guys, and to look backward. You just need to move forward and take care of yourself. I really hope this helps everyone. Get a lot of comments, guys. Let's give a lot of comments. Have you had this? Do you understand this virtuose triad? And have you had DVTs or pulmonary embolisms? And was it related to what? To your history, to steroids or testosterone? Thank you very much.